while we'll be discussing three military leaders, one Axis, Rommel, and two Allied, Patton and Montgomery, the real idea here is to attempt to delineate their next generation through their only sons, Manfred Rommel, George Patton IV, and David Montgomery, and the unexpected friendships that developed amongst them. We'll begin with a brief summary. Then we'll discuss the fathers, their beginnings, their World War II careers, their lives thereafter. After that, we'll introduce the three sons, their paternal relationships, their lives through World War II and afterwards, and their friendships. Philosophical reflections on the sons' friendships in the light of their father's relationships. The handout, by the way, has a lot of information in it, but doesn't necessarily follow the talk. So it's probably not going to do you a lot of good to try to figure out where we are looking at the handout. Just first a summary. The interplay of the personalities of Rommel, Montgomery, and Patton during World War II is well remembered. Rommel and Montgomery faced one another in North Africa. Patton and Montgomery competed for winning first place in Sicily. Patton and Rommel never actually met in battle, but Patton led a decoy unit in England to fool the German command about where the cross-channel invasion would land. Patton and Montgomery once again competed for top honors in the race across Europe to invade Germany, by which time Rommel was dead, forced to take poison by the Nazi leadership. The three were very different men, unique leaders in their individual ways. All three respected, detested, feared, and honored during their military lives, and all three well recorded by subsequent historians. At different moments after the end of the war, sets of unique human experiences occurred when friendships developed between Rommel's son, Manfred, and the sons of Montgomery and Patton. David and George IV, respectively. Of these three, only one survives today, David Bernard Montgomery, second Viscount of Alamein. This paper discusses the three fathers and the three sons, including the remarkable friendships in the latter. First, the fathers. The eldest was Patton, two years older than Montgomery. Rommel was six years younger than Montgomery. The backgrounds of the fathers were quite different. Rommel's father was a teacher. Montgomery's an Anglo-Irish vicar who was later Anglican Bishop of Tasmania. Patton's father was a lawyer and politician. Rommel began his military life as an officer candidate in a regional infantry regiment. After preparatory school at St. Paul's School in London, Montgomery went to the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst. Patton, after preparatory school at Stephen Clark's School for Boys in Pasadena, California, went first to Virginia Military Institute, the school where his military-oriented family had attended for many years, and after a year transferred to West Point, the United States Military Academy. In World War I, Rommel served in France, Romania, and Italy. He sustained a gunshot wound in the hip. He was known for his teaching. Montgomery served in France, and he had gunshot wounds in the lung and knee. He was known for his emphasis on training. Patton served in Mexico before the United States entered the war, and then in France, where he sustained a gunshot wound in the hip. He was known for his expertise in tank warfare. Montgomery was the first to reach flag rank in 1938. Patton was next in 1940. Rommel became a favorite in Hitler and reached flag rank in 1941. World War II was the stage upon which the three fathers played out their roles. Rommel was unquestionably an enemy of Montgomery and Patton, 
but there also existed strong antagonism between Montgomery and Patton. Both Montgomery and Patton had admiration for Rommel, and no doubt Rommel did for them. The battle styles of Rommel and Patton were quite similar. Both of their styles differed significantly from that of Montgomery. Rommel's beginning role was to command Hitler's headquarters troops. In early 1940, he was given command of the 7th Panzer Division. Earlier, his interest and focus had been the infantry, but the ideas and writings of Heinz Gurdian opened his intellect to the possibilities of mobilized warfare, particularly tanks. In May of 1940, he made a dashing charge through France to the Channel Coast, contributing to the subsequent British evacuation at Dunkirk. In February 1941, he was ordered to Libya in North Africa. The story of Rommel's remarkable advances against the British forces in North Africa as he drove toward Egypt in the Suez Canal is well known. His equally remarkable defeat at the Second Battle of El Alamein in October 1942 is also firmly in the books of military history. He was ordered home to Germany in March 1943. Thereafter, he was ordered to Greece and a month thereafter to Italy. In Italy, he was in command of Axis forces attempting to both retain Italian lands and fortify against the anticipated Allied march up both sides of the country's boot. Three months later, he was ordered to Normandy in France to defend the Channel Coast. In July 1944, he received major head injuries when his car was bombed. Throughout his military career, he thought highly of Hitler and became one of his favorites, but never joined the Nazi party. Because he had been Im implicated in the attempt on Hitler's life in July 1944, in October he took poison to end his life in order to preserve his family. He was buried with full military honors. Montgomery was in France in early 1940. In August 1942, he was ordered to North Africa and also was knighted that year. As we have seen, the Second Battle of El Alamein was in October of that year. The Germans sur surrendered in Tunisia in May 1943. Immediately following that, Sicily was invaded in July, Montgomery leading the British troops. Thereafter, he led the British troops up the east coast of Italy. He was called home in 1944 to lead the Allied armies into France. After D-Day, his troops marched across northern France, Belgium, the Netherlands, and northern Germany. On May 4, 1945, he accepted the surrender of the German northern armies on Lunenburg Heath. Patton entered World War II in November 1942, commanding the Western Task Force in North Africa. He never actually faced Rommel. In 1943, he led the U.S. 7th Army in Sicily, competing with Montgomery for top recognition, both on the battlefield and in the media. He was not involved in the Italian campaign. In 1944, he commanded the fictitious first U.S. Army group to deceive the German commanders about the coming invasion site. In August, his armored division unit swept across northern France. In December, his army came to the rescue in the Battle of the Bulge. In January 1945, he reached the German frontier and in March cleared the entire area north of the Moselle River. Once again, he and Montgomery competed for top honors, this time in the race for the Rhine. It is interesting to follow the encounters of our three actors, Rommel, Montgomery, and Patton, during World War II. They were in close approximation to one another, but never actually met <clears throat> directly in battle. Rommel's drive to the Channel Coast made the defeat of the British certain, but Montgomery's involvement in delaying actions stayed the moment and allowed the British to evacuate from Dunkirk. 
In North Africa, Rommel and Montgomery met head on. Patton's forces arrived later but were kept predominantly in the West. Rommel had been recalled to Germany and was not present in Sicily. But the competition between Montgomery and Patton was in full display there. In Italy, Rommel was up in the north preparing defenses while Montgomery led British forces up the east coast. It was in the preparation, execution, and aftermath of D-Day that all three were integrally involved. While not historically what he would have wished, was critically important in that the German forces were convinced of its reality and bought into the deception. Rommel had been sent to reinforce the channel defenses and he always thought that the invasion would occur where it actually did. Montgomery, of course, led the Allied forces in the invasion. Once a foothold on the French coast had been established, Patton's forces joined in the actual battle. Rommel was soon out of play, first with head injuries from the bombing of his car and then with his forced suicide. As the drive eastward proceeded, the rivalry between Montgomery and Patton again surged. The military strategies of the three form a curious mosaic. Rommel and Patton shared quite similar approaches. The aggressive use of tanks with offensive action being taken wherever possible. Montgomery, on the other hand, favored a set piece approach have all eventualities covered through thorough training and planning, basically following a defensive course to allow attrition to win the day. In retrospect, it is fair to say that it required both the Patton and Montgomery approaches to win the European war. If Rommel had had more support from Berlin and the defensive aspects, the outcome might well have been different. In 1945, Patton was removed from command for his criticism of allied, allied post-war Nazification programs. In December, he sustained what proved to be fatal neck injuries in a wreck involving his car and an army truck. Montgomery was left as the sole survivor. In 1946, he was created Knight of the Garter and First Viscount Montgomery of Alamein commanded the British Army of the Rhine and became chief of the Imperial General Staff. From 1948 to 51, he was chairman of the Western European Union. He was deputy commander of NATO from 1951 until 1958. He died at home in England in 1976. Rommel's fame rests on his early decision to decline a general staff career and remain in the infantry followed by his quick grasp for the tremendous possibilities of mechanized and armored warfare, as well as his boldness and initiative. He always made it a point to be seen at the head of battle, and his troops admired him. Montgomery was always a cautious, thorough strategist, often to the exasperation of his fellow Allied commanders. Like Rommel, he purposefully circulated amongst his men, and they, in turn, adored him. Patton had great initiative, ruthless drive, and disregard for classic military rules. His outbursts led to both civilian criticism for some of his actions, as well as impairing the progress of his career. As with Rommel and Montgomery, he was beloved by his troops because of his rousing, usually profane, words of encouragement and his aggressive love of war. Turning now to the sons, had only one son. Patton had the first. The sons of Rommel and Montgomery were the same age. The sons of Rommel and Patton, although separated by five years, shared the same birthday, December 24th. All three of the sons had minimal face-to-face -face relationship with their fathers, during their adolescent years because of their father's absence during the war. All three did maintain close relationships with their fathers through letter writing. Manfred Rommel was 16 years old when his father was forced to commit suicide. 
George S. Patton IV was approaching his 22nd birthday when his father died from injuries sustained in the car wreck. David Montgomery was 47 years old when his father died of natural causes. While all three sons had military service, only one, George S. Patton IV, pursued a military career. Born in December 1928, the only son of Irwin and Lucia Rommel. In 1942, at age 14, he joined the Luftwaffe as an assistant. He was at home on leave because of his father's injuries and the car bombing when his father was taken away and forced to commit suicide. In 1945, he was dismissed from the Luftwaffe and conscripted into the paramilitary. He deserted and was taken prisoner of war by the French First Army. After the war, he passed his matriculation examination and entered law school at Tübingen. In 1954, he married Lissalette Diber. That same year, he left his law practice and entered civil service. He was first elected mayor of Stuttgart in 1974 and was subsequently re-elected for a total of three eight-year terms. That's 24 years as mayor. In 1996, he retired from politics thereafter authoring several books and writing poetry. He received numerous national and international honors and died in November 2013, having endured Parkinson's disease in his later years. 1928, the only son of Bernard and Elizabeth Carver Montgomery. His mother died in 1937. During the war years, his father arranged for him to live with the headmaster and his wife of his preparatory school, Amesbury School. He was then educated at Winchester College, an independent British school for boys, and attained an engineering degree at Trinity College, Cambridge. He served as a lieutenant in the 1st Tank Regiment. His first marriage to Mary Connell ended in divorce, and he married, secondly, Tessa Browning. He has been a businessman and a politician, as well as serving as a goodwill ambassador to South America. He succeeded his father as second Viscount Montgomery of Alamein. He was made CBE, Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, and CMG, Commander, Commander of the Order of St. Michael and St. George, he has also received many international honors and is still living. George S. Patton IV was born in December 1923, the only son of George and Beatrice Patton. He attended preparatory school at Fessenden School in Newton, Massachusetts, and then Hill School in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. He graduated from West Point in 1946. His father had died the previous December from injuries sustained in the accident. He married Joanne Holbrook in 1962. He served during the Berlin Airlift and in the Korean War and had three tours in Vietnam during that war. In 1970, he was promoted to Brigadier General and commanded the U.S. Second Armored Division, as had his father. He received numerous military medals and international awards. In 1980, he retired from the military. He died in June 2004, and like Manfred Rommel, he dealt with Parkinson's disease at the end of his life. In 1958, Manfred Rommel and George Patton first met in Stuttgart. Patton was on assignment in Germany. His mother had always wanted to meet Erwin Rommel's widow, but that had never happened. So he decided to introduce himself to Rommel's son. That began a long-term friendship. Although Patton was five years older than Rommel, they shared the same birthday. In his book, Growing Up Patton, Reflections on Heroes, History, and Family Wisdom, Patton's son, Ben, devotes an entire chapter to Manfred Rommel. In 1979, Manfred Rommel and David Montgomery first met. 
They developed a friendship that lasted over 30 years until Rommel's death. Manfred Rommel was able to share his experience with and knowledge of the circumstances of his father's death only after he established the close friendship with David Montgomery, 35 years after the event. Over the years, they attended a number of occasions together, both in Germany and in the United Kingdom. In 2002, both were present at Westminster Abbey for a service of thanksgiving commemorating the 70th anniversary of the Battle of El Alamein. Montgomery and George S. Patton IV never met. While one suspects this was due more to circumstance and location than being purposeful, it is interesting to note that the sons of enemies did meet and become good friends, while the sons of allies who were antagonists remained apart. This paper has sketched the lives of three dominant military leaders of World War II, Rommel, Montgomery, and Patton. Much has been written about each of them, both biographical and autobiographical. A singular book that covers the interplay of the three is Patton, Montgomery, and Rommel by Terry Brighton, a British military historian and writer. This paper also introduces the three only sons of the three leaders, Manfred Rommel, David Montgomery, and George S. Patton IV. Information about these three individuals has been more difficult to find, and thus searches on the internet have had to be the main sources. In trying to determine whether the Montgomery and Patton sons ever met, personal communications from the sons of George Patton IV and David Montgomery, Ben and Henry respectively, conclusively indicate that they never met. There's something very encouraging, very helpful, hopeful, in the reality that some of the enemies, that the sons of enemies could become good friends. All three fathers would be very proud of their sons, both for their accomplishments in their lives, but perhaps especially for their having extended their hands to one another in these friendships. A quotation from Friedrich Nietzsche seems appropriate here. What was silent in the father speaks in the son, and often I found in the son the unveiled secret of the father. In these six lives are fine examples of human experience through war, through family, and through friendship. They echo in many ways the passage of human time, which we all hope and pray results in forward positive movement for mankind. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.